Now we have Abhi Rao, Principal Architect, and Madhav Sati, Cloud Customer Engineer from Google. They're here to talk about the new Kubernetes Gateway API, the future of ingress in Kubernetes. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Abhinav Rao, and, with, and I'm a, a Cloud Engineer at uh, Google. Hi, my name is Madhav Sate. Uh, I'm a Cloud Engineer at Google. Hey, Madhav, isn't it great to be back at Spring One again? Yes, and get to be back with the experts. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get to the let's go to the let's get to the presentation. So um, we're here to talk about uh, the Kubernetes Gateway API, and uh, so let's let's get started. So here's the usual legal legalese we have to put on every slide, um, and then now let's get to the meat of the content. So. We're here to talk about the, the new Kubernetes Gateway API, and we're gonna cover ingress first and why, how the Gateway API is an evolution of um, the ingress feature. And then we'll cover, we'll see the Gateway API in action. And after that, we'll cover GitOps and why that's important. And then finally, we'll wrap up with how with Cloud Build plus GitOps plus the Gateway API, it really, really leads to superpowers. So let's get started. So a quick review of Ingress. So Ingress is a feature, as we're all aware, is a way to route traffic from a load balancer to your backend application services. The Ingress resource, as you can see here, includes the app routing as well as Ingress controller details. So the app here, um, as you can see, the Platform admin usually configures the ingress resource and any annotations that go with it. And so this binds the ingress resource with a load balancer implementation. But the app owner is actually controlling the services that the backend is bound to. So in this case, there are two applications, foo v1 and foo v2. And one of them is going in, in the root path, the other one at slash v2. But here you can see that when we want to go to production, now there is a uh, conflict. Who updates this YAML file? The platform admin, the app owner. So this leads to, uh, mixes two different concerns. So this can lead to friction and slow down deployment to production. And we know how important production is, right? Josh Long was always saying production, we need to get to production quickly. So this is an important aspect of, you know, creating this, this friction. So Gateway API, solve one of these concerns. So let's take a look at how it does solve it. So first, um, the most important part is it introduces a new object called the gateway class. And the gateway class is provided by the platform provider. And in this case, you know, it can be um, Istio or uh, Google Cloud or Contour or any other uh, provider. In our example, we'll be using Istio. So once the platform provider has provided you with a gateway class, you then have a gateway that refers to that gateway class. And this is where the platform admin comes in, where the platform administrator configures the gateway. And the gateway then uh, binds it to a low balancer implementation, which the gateway class refers to. And then the app owner in this case then applies an HTTP route, uh, another resource, new resource, that binds the route to a gateway that the platform administrator has defined. And similarly, um, you can have a namespace where it's another app owner and they can bind to that as well. So as you can see here, it decouples the platform administrators, um, um, uh, platform administrator from the HTTP route um, so that you don't have that conflict about who's gonna update the YAML file. So let's get into a little bit more details about what um, the, how the binding happens from the gateway to the HTTP route. So the gate, so here in the gateway um, YAML, we can see that it refers to the Istio gateway class, and then using labels as we're all familiar with with services and pods, um, there's a label that it matches on, and that label is defined in the HTTP route. So in this way each of the developers in the different namespaces can then bind to a gateway and the platform admin can control the implementation of that gateway 
and switch the implementation of the gateway without affecting um, the the namespaces, uh, the apps running in namespaces foo and bar here, as, as shown here. So why do we need a new API apart from this new feature? Well, Ingress does do a lot of things as we as shown here, but also um, we've we've looked at the gateway API providing some more features, especially header-based matching, weighted traffic splitting, and other features. So one thing to note here is that Ingress is an evolution of, uh, uh, sorry, the Gateway API is an evolution of Ingress. Ingress, it will be fully supported and Gateway API just adds features additionally. So uh, there is extended support um, as you can see here, and it also introduces custom extensions where um, you can have support for other protocols like gRPC, uh, other low volume algorithms, et cetera. So that's enough talk. Let's uh, get to a demo. So um, all the code for this demo can be found um, on this repo right here, and we'll, 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 we'll send a link to it, and th th there will be a link to it in, uh, in the presentation. And we have what we have here in the apps directory we have a Spring Boot app, of course, it's a Spring one. So we have a Spring Boot app and it is running on the right-hand side here and it's auto refreshing on, on one of my windows. We also have K9s that's watching the application that's deployed. So let's go ahead and make change to this uh, application. And this application is using uh, the Gateway API. So let's go ahead and make a change to this. And let's say right now the color is blue. Uh, so let's go change this to a color. And I wanna change it to, let's say pink, or actually let's change it to red. And I'm gonna commit this change. And so as it rolls out, we do have a pipeline that's gonna kick off, that's going to update this application. But while this application updates, let me show you the resources that's running uh, in, in, in the cluster. So this is a tool called K9s, which, we, which we're using to um, um, look at the resources. So here, let's look at the uh, HTTP route, so which is what we're looking for. So I flip control A and I do HTTP and it finds all the objects with HTTP. And here I, I can see the HTTP object. So here, if I see there is 100% traffic going to our service, right? So let's take a look at do control A again, and let's take a look at the gateway. And what does that look like? So here we have the gateways, and, and we need to look at the Istio system and look at the gateway here. We have, um, let's go take a look at where, where it's defined. And here, the HTTP route the gateway is defined and it's saying we're using the Istio gateway class and we're looking for routes that are HTTP route and we're gonna match on this label, right? And the HTTP route did have, did have this label. So we are matching on that and that's how that's mapped. And we can also see the external IP address over here where, um, where the app is gonna be deployed. So, so let's talk, take a look at deployment. Again, let's see if there's any changes here. Um, we go to the foo namespace. And we'll also take a look at the gateway class. Let's take a look at the gateway class as well. So we'll control A and we go to the gateway classes. And here, as we can see, we have three different gateway class implementations. Uh, this is the GK, since we're running on GKE, this is the GKE one, but we do have Istio as well, uh, which is the one that we're using, right? So, so, so far so good. Now let's um, come out of this and take a look at if our application has been updated or not. And another thing that I wanna cover here is that how, how, how we deploy the application is, oh, it looks like we are getting a, uh, the, the, the application deploy. Oh, but wait, how come there are two applications uh, being deployed here? Hmm, that is funny. 
Um, but another thing I do want to mention is we are putting the version, the Git SHA, the, the, the Git SHA here um, as our version. So it's looking like there are two applications deployed and now it is changing colors red to orange. Hey, what's going on here? So let's take a look at what the HTTP route is doing. So control A again, and here HTTP route. And I'm gonna take a look at this route and let's see, maybe the route changed somehow. Oh, look, it's doing weighted traffic splitting. So it's going to this service and this service doing weighted traffic splitting. Wait a minute. So this can do traffic splitting. So I don't need a service mesh and I can do it without some custom build um, deploy scripts. Well, that's very powerful. But I must know, Madhav must have done this. He probably is the person who did this just to play a prank on me while I'm doing my demo. So I'm gonna mess with him. So let us, before his demo, because my demo is done, um, I'm gonna see if I can delete this deployment. Oh. Let's delete it. Am I sure? Yep. Let's see how that happens. Well, wait a minute. It's not getting deleted. Something's going on. Martha must have done something. Well, he thinks he's smart. Well, I think I'm gonna maybe delete the namespace. Let's go to namespace. Well, let's go to the full namespace. Let's hit delete. Delete, yes. What? No. Permission denied? Okay, this has gotta be something that, that, that Mother is doing. Hey, Mother, do you know what's going on here? I think so, I mean, I'll, uh, let me share my screen and let me show why you're not able to tamper with the demo. <laughs> All right, can you see my screen, everybody? All right, thank you. So let me start presenting. The reason, uh, Abhinav, you were not able to delete the resources or not able to delete the namespace is because you have implemented GitOps using uh, Anthos Config Sync or Config Sync on the GKE. Uh, GitOps has become the industry standard for deploying infrastructure or setting up infrastructure as code or infrastructure as, uh, as data. What Git Sync uh, for the uh, the config thing that we're going to demonstrate in this uh, in this session is a feature that allows you to define configuration as data in a version control or secure repository. It's essentially a GitOps practice where you uh, treat Git as a single source of truth for your desired state of the cluster, and the config thing then pulls down the configuration from that Git repository from within the cluster and matches the runtime state of the cluster with the desired state that it has pulled from the uh, from the from the config repo. The config sync is beyond just a simple GitOps practice that is followed in the industry. It has added several sophisticated features that allows the fleet management super easy. What we are looking for here is that you can manage thousands of clusters with GitOps or perhaps no ops. You can use a single GitOps repository to hydrate the clusters, thousands of clusters located across different geographies. The clusters could be Anthos clusters running on-prem, on bare metal or the clouds, or in our demo, we are using the GK clusters on Google Cloud, but they could be attached clusters also. So cluster administrator can simply push the configuration updates to the Git repository and all the clusters will be uh, updated based on that. And it's a pull model. Every 15 seconds, it goes to the config repository, pulls the new config, make sure that the runtime matches with the, the desired state. But how about making sure that not all clusters are impacted by the config change? If you want to release some config change, if you want to de deploy a new software, you want to try it on few clusters, then the config sync offers a feature called cluster selector. And just the way uh, service and pods, uh, the labels are matched, uh, in your case, you showed the gateway class or the gateway and the HTTP route using the label selector to find out the matching resources. Similarly, the cluster selector is also used here to match the clusters to, if, to effectively roll out the configuration to certain clusters and then roll out to more and more clusters by uh, matching more and more cluster labels. So it's a very sophisticated way of managing fleet of clusters, perhaps thousands of clusters. And the idea here is that there is absolutely no reason for anybody to operate a shadow operations or accidentally causing a conflict drift in place. Beyond the uh, cluster operations and the no ops features, 
Config Sync also offers separation of concerns using multi-repo Config Sync. And it matches very nicely with the uh, with the separation of concerns in the API, API gateway, sorry, gateway API that you talked about, Abhinav. Mean, by separating the repository for administrative concerns in the root repo and the application's concern in the namespace repo or app owner repo, you essentially have ability to define the boundaries. Cluster administrator maintain all the cluster level resources, whether they are cluster roles, the list of namespaces that you're allowed to have on the cluster or any other cluster level resource that is maintained in the root repo. And as you can see, the arrow is actually going from the cluster to the repo. So it's pulling the configuration from the Git repository. Then the cluster administrator can decide what type of root repo he wants, what type of organization he wants. Does he want to control or does he or she want to control entire cluster using just a root repo that is possible. But if you want a separation of concern, you can define the repo to be hierarchical and you can define multiple repos. In that case, the root repo will have definition of all the namespaces that the cluster will have. And each namespace then can choose which separate Git repository or which separate GitOps repository for that particular application namespace is to be utilized, right? So you can actually define here, see that full app owner has its own GitOps repo and bar app owner has its own GitOps repo. Now, this is an example implementation that we have implemented in this demo. On the top here, you see the root repository used by the cluster administrator, and it essentially has uh, important three important folders. The cluster folder essentially contains all the cluster level resources. In our case, it, we are using the STO gateway class, and that gateway class is going to be deployed in its own STO namespace uh, by definition of having this STO namespace folder here under the namespace repo, under the namespace folder. So all the uh, resources for the STO namespace are right here maintained by the cluster administrator. However, the organization has decided for application concerns, you want to have a separate repository for application concerns, such as deployments and HTTP routes. Those are application concerns. You shouldn't have to burden the cluster administrator for that. Application has owner has a full control of how to deploy or how frequently to deploy by controlling the application repository or the namespace repository for the application, which is actually defined here. So the re repo sync mentioned in the full namespace has the location and the credentials used for the namespace repository. And the namespace repository, as you can see, contains the deployment artifacts and the HTTP route artifacts that are use useful for our application namespace. So with that in mind, uh, let us go ahead and take a look at a demo. I um, uh, Abhinav demonstrated the, uh, the power of uh, the rolling out of the configuration using Gateway API. Uh, we have two different clusters here, as you can see. And uh, the cluster, SP1 cluster is what Abhinav used. And SP3 cluster, SP1 cluster three is another cluster that we have over here. I'm going to switch the uh, context to this cluster three. And just to show you that I do not have any applications running in a full namespace, I'm going to navigate to full namespace and show you that there is no application running there. So the full namespace is clean. I'm going to install the configuration management on this cluster right now. Uh, and hopefully the demo guards are going to be with me. Okay. So let me switch here the namespace to configuration management namespace. We have created namespace ahead of uh, time uh, because it requires a secret to be created to point to the Git repository. And we have already done that to save time. So we're gonna watch the resources to be created here. As part of the deployment, I have already installed the operator for the configuration management. And in this case, I'm gonna install the first resource called config management. As you can see, I'm gonna first install this resource. I'm going to first install the config management resource and that will Okay, let me I think I have to install the operator too. Okay, I think I forgot to install the operator. 
live demos. <laughs> Let's see. Is it timing out the Q curve? Hmm. Okay, I think it timed out. Let me try again. Wow. Third time, third time's a charm. Yeah, I don't know why the network, perhaps the network is bad, so it's possible. Oh, thank God, the network is bad. <laughs> Yay, demo gods are with us. All right, so we started creating the resources required to manage the configuration. And uh, uh, as you can see in this definition of this YAML, we have chosen to use a multi-repo and the next resource we are going to install is the repo sync, which has uh, which has the uh, Git repository uh, structure mentioned here. Okay, and it is location of this repository. I'm going to apply this as well. Okay. Sync. Okay, it's going to start reconciling. And now let's go and see whether we get the resources in the, this is the reconciler for the namespace too. So it has found out that not only the root reconciler, but it also finds out that it requires to have a reconciler for the full namespace too. So we're gonna to go to the full namespace and see whether the resources started appearing over there. All right, so we got the deployments uh, that Abhinav had created in the first cluster and all of the, the second cluster also got hydrated by the deployments that were in that uh, Git repository. So I already have the IP address of this one, and I want to show you that it is it is actually going from the the, the second cluster that which we just installed the okay. And this also has the same uh, same type of colors that Abhinav installed, and I just want to show you that the both clusters actually behave exactly the same. So both clusters have the same colors and the same HTTP routes and the same type of applications running. So the next part of my demo I want to do is I want to actually quickly go back to the presentation and highlight the benefits of the, how much time I have? One minute? Okay, so the benefit that we covered here is that you can hydrate the cluster from the single source of truth. I think I lost some time because of the, the timeout. That's fine. I'm going to actually roll back the deployment and demonstrate the pipeline. And I'm going to go back and uh, go back here. I have a build pipelines that are two build pipelines. The one, the first build pipeline here was invoked after the git push to the code repo. But there are two build pipelines which are rollout and rollback. I got a customer feedback that they don't like the red color. So I'm going to invoke the rollback pipeline that will actually. Uh, roll back the deployment that was created. And it actually shows the power of um, the, the CI CD serverless CI CD with GitOps as well as the power of the, um, the Air Gateway API, which allows us to really just split the traffic either across multiple services or redirect traffic 100%. So I have an instance of the previously successful rollback and it's gonna do this kind of a, a rollback operations. It will find out there are two service instances, two service deployments running, and it will find out which one was the latest one because I've hit the rollback, which one was installed the latest, and it's gonna find it out and it's gonna roll back to the older version of the service. And it will 
push the configuration changes to the gateway API YAML, and also it will delete the older deployments. So after the successful install, uh, successful, uh, let's see whether the rollback is successful here. The rollback pipeline is running. If the rollback pipeline runs successfully, you will see that it will go back to only red color after that. And you will start seeing the applications deployed disappearing from here. Hey, uh, hey Madhav, in the of time, um, I think we can wrap up. Yep, sure. Uh, all right, so it is, I think, doing that. But let me go back to my presentation. Go over here. OK. All right, so one last slide I will cover about how the pipeline works, and then we'll cover wrap up the session, OK? All right, so, so this is the CI CD pipeline that we have implemented. Uh, there are there is a the the CI pipeline is implemented using Cloud Build. You can use either a cloud native build packs or Docker file, and we have used customized to render the YAMLs and then get push those YAMLs to the namespace repository. In 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 our case, we have a multi repo scenario, and then the app the cluster will pull those resources. For rollout and rollback, we have a DevOps engineer based on the customer feedback. Either can roll out the changes. That means hundred percent traffic will go to the new version of the service. A rollback means as we will demonstrate it here, all the traffic will go back to the previous version of the service and the new service will be, uh, will be deleted. If you have confidence in the pipeline, you can automate that workflow using observability. So you can set the pipelines uh, metrics driven and event driven. Um, so you don't need a human interaction in that case and you can take advantage of the same pipeline if you have confidence in those pipelines. And as you can see here, my deployment, uh, since I did the rollback, only uh, the deployment has been rolled back. Only three parts of the previous version are showing up. And all the time, only orange color is showing up and the red color has been rolled back. And exactly the same configuration is reflecting in both the clusters. So SP cluster, SP1 cluster and SP1 cluster three. Both the clusters are exactly running the same version of the application thanks to the, uh, to the GitOps and the, the API gateway. It is able to split the traffic or not split the traffic. So with that, I will hand it over to uh, uh, with to Abhinav for the key takeaways. Sure. So quickly, Gateway API allows you to do traffic splitting without server spesh and other things uh, that we saw. Separation of concerns uh, with cluster admin because of the app owner. Uh, config sync gives you the consistency to manage fleet of clusters, uh, prevent shadow ops like I tried to do. So don't do that. And then, of course, you combine that all with Gateway API plus the multi repo config sync plus. Cloud build and you have superpowers. So thank you. That's our talk, and we'll be available in the QA to answer any questions. So thanks for watching. Thanks, Abhi and Madhav. And for the QA, just go over to Slack for the channel for this talk and join the QA.